Nightmares suck. Hey, I'm Dr. McCleary, and I specialize in taking some of the baddest warriors on this planet and talking to them about their feelings. It's a great job. In this video, I'm going to talk about nightmares, what they are, why people with PTSD have them, and what we can do about them, and why trauma treatment doesn't always work for nightmares. Most people experience nightmares from time to time. But for individuals that suffer with PTSD, those nightmares can be quite frequent. They could even be every time they actually go to sleep. And those nightmares typically fall into two different categories. It's a category of themes. So the nightmares might not always be the same, but they kind of follow the same theme. Oh, every time I go to sleep, I have a nightmare that somebody is chasing me and I can't get away. Okay. May not be the same person, may not even be the same environment in those nightmares, but it's the same theme. The other kind of nightmares that is often typical for people that have PTSD is those re-experiencing nightmares. So nightmares based on the trauma that they actually experience. So just reliving that experience over and over again in their dreams. Both types of nightmares can be incredibly stressful. But why do we have these nightmares? There are a ton of different theories that different people have had over the years regarding well, why do we dream and what do dreams mean? But for individuals that suffer from PTSD and have nightmares that are related to their trauma, those theories kind of fall into two different camps. One camp is a cognitive processing issue and the other camp has more of a biological basis issue. Our brain never turns off and if it did we'd have a bigger problem than nightmares. But because our brain never turns off that means it never really stops processing information and information that didn't get processed or put in its right place during the day while you were awake when you go to sleep, your brain says, all right, let me go ahead and process the rest of the stuff from the day. The problem is with PT, for people that experience PTSD is that avoidance is literally part of the diagnosis. So literally people spend all of their day sometimes trying not to process what happened to them, not to think about the trauma not to go anywhere that looks, feels, smells like the trauma. And then when they go to sleep, their brain says, yes, finally. Now I don't have this person actively avoiding what I actually need to process. And now you have nightmares. But Dr. McCleary, my nightmares aren't always about my trauma. Okay. So one of the reasons for that is when information is processed while you're sleeping, some parts of your brain are more online than other parts of your brain. And the thoughts that, okay, well, everything gets processed in this part or this part or this part of the brain, it's not exactly true. Your brain all works together. Now, are there some things that are activated more than others during certain types of emotions or certain types of thoughts or certain types of behaviors? Well, sure, but it works as a system together. What that means is when those thoughts are being processed and when your brain is trying to get some rest in certain parts of your brain and other parts of your brain are more turned on, it doesn't always make sense. It doesn't have you alert and it doesn't have your prefrontal cortex fully online in order to actually make sense of all the information that it has to process. So it does its best job. Maybe it's not the person that was there with you during the trauma. Maybe it's not the environment. Maybe the environment is totally changed. It just looks weird. Maybe you were in Iraq and yet you're in Afghanistan. Maybe you were in Iraq, yet now you're in Texas. Our brain does that. It puts these different things 
into play even though those might not have been directly related to the trauma that you experience. But it does its best job to figure it out while you're offline. I assume no one wants a science lesson on the biological basis of nightmares. So I'll spare you that time and me going on a nerd rant. You know, that was actually an assumption. So if you guys actually do want that science lesson on sleep and nightmares, let me know down in the comments and I'll actually make that video for you. The amygdala is a part of the brain that regulates certain types of emotions. And in individuals that have PTSD, their amygdala is often working overtime. So while somebody is sleeping, their amygdala is continuing to work and continuing to actually produce some of those dreams that are heavy on the emotion. One of the symptoms of PTSD is hyperarousal. So being on high alert, even when there's no specific threat or danger. So because of this constant state of feeling like there is a threat going on, some of the chemicals in the brain can get thrown off a bit. So for example, most people are familiar with the fight or flight response. Think about the fight or flight response going off when you're actually sleeping. So as you're sleeping, your brain chemicals are still working, but they might not be working to the level that they should be because you're so used to being on hyper alert. So this is causing some of those nightmares to occur because you are actually going on a fight or flight process while you're sleeping crazy huh science so now that we know what nightmares are what do we do about them good news the good news is there are multiple evidence-based treatments for ptsd prolonged exposure emdr cognitive processing therapy and others and as you're going through these types of evidence-based treatments for ptsd and your ptsd symptoms are starting to come down so your hyperarousal symptoms are starting to come down. You're starting to be able to monitor and control your emotions more. You're starting to be able to process a lot of those things during the day so they don't have to get processed while you're sleeping. These things for many people dramatically reduce the amount of nightmares they have and the intensity of those nightmares. But Dr. McCleary, I've gone through evidence-based treatment for PTSD and I'm doing better, but I keep having these nightmares. Okay. So sometimes, even after going through an evidence-based treatment for PTSD, and after a lot of your symptoms have gone down, the nightmares persist. And one of the main reasons for this is most evidence-based treatments for PTSD do not give a lot of attention to the symptoms of nightmares. There is a lot of attention towards cognitions that develop after a trauma or emotional content or hyperarousal symptoms or avoidance symptoms, but not a lot of attention goes directly towards nightmares. And to these evidence-based treatments credit, most of the time, if you have reduction in those other areas, your nightmares will come down. But sometimes those nightmares persist. The two most common ways to treat nightmares are with medications, which help with some of those chemical imbalances, and imagery rehearsal therapy, or IRT. And imagery rehearsal therapy is essentially just what it sounds like. It is re-scripting your dreams, re-scripting those nightmares while you're actually still awake. And believe it or not, this actually works. I am the type of psychologist that I don't really believe in stuff. I got a lot of book smarts, sure. Read all kinds of manuals, been to all types of trainings regarding how to do different types of treatments. This is one of those treatments that was actually a hard sell for me, but I've seen it work and I needed to see it work for me to actually believe that this is possible. So this is not just a type of therapy that 
I've read about. It's a type of therapy that I've actually have done with real patients and I have seen it work. There are multiple videos on YouTube regarding IRT, so there's already some pretty good information about that. But if you want me to make it a video about that, just put it down in the comments and I'll make that video for you. As I said in the beginning of the video, nightmares suck. But why do they suck? Well, one of the reasons is just because of how stressful they are. You know, they're so stressful that they often wake us up in the middle of the night and then we can't go back to sleep. Or worse, we don't want to go back to sleep because we don't want to have another nightmare. We don't want to experience being that stressed out again. We don't want to relive that experience again. I think the most scary movie out there is Nightmare on Elm Street. Freddy Krueger. Not wanting to go to sleep. Terrifying. The problem is sleep is one of those essential elements that we need. It's one of the things that our body needs, our brain needs, and without it, we are not very good at functioning throughout the day. And for anybody who's ever had a bad night's sleep or not slept at all, they know exactly what I'm talking about. So if you are having problems with nightmares, please talk to somebody about it. Talk to your psychologist, talk to your primary care physician, because not sleeping can be incredibly detrimental to your health. And getting treatment for nightmares is possible. It's nothing to be ashamed of. We all have them. Some of us just have them more than others. And when it starts affecting our ability to sleep and thus affecting our ability to function, that becomes a big problem real quick. Something to think about. If this video was helpful for you, please like it. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna learn more about PTSD and military culture. And more important than that, if this video was helpful for you, it can probably be helpful for somebody else. So as always, I ask that you share it with somebody else. Share it with another veteran. Because at the end of the day, that's what all of this is really about. One veteran trying to help another.